just can't stop doing tier lists. What can I say? I am addicted to the tier list life. And to be fair, you guys seem to be loving the tier list as well because every time I upload a tier list video, the support is just absolutely incredible. So I'm gonna keep doing them until they don't work anymore. The plan is to do every position in Major League Baseball. Today, we're gonna be going on to the catchers, my favorite position in baseball. For those of you who don't know, I was a catcher for the majority of my life as a baseball player. But I hope to do this for every single position. As long as you guys keep showing amazing support, I'm gonna keep doing it. Plus, it makes the comment section spicy. Everyone's feeling the heat when I do tier lists. Everyone's got an opinion. And honestly, even though I don't necessarily agree with a lot of you when you say some hot takes, I do love the kind of interaction we have on this channel. So of course, feel free to get in the comment section down below. Let me know what you agree with, what you disagree with. Have a conversation, comment on other people's replies. You guys know the drill. Remember, leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it. That's the best way to show your support. Subscribe if you're new and you enjoy the content. The growth on this channel has been insane and that's because of you guys. So if you are new here and you love baseball, make sure you hit that sub button. And remember, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at GiraffeNeckMark. Links in the description down below to both of those. I'm always talking about baseball over there. It's the best way to continue the conversation. So the first catcher on this list is gonna be Austin Barnes of the Dodgers. I'm going to drop him right in the C category. He's pretty good defensively. He's a little bit fast on the bases considering he's a catcher, but he's not really hitting. He's hitting like 230. He's never been much of a hitter in his career. He was better in kind of that platoon splitting time role with Yasmani Grandal. I got to put him in the C. He would probably go in D if he wasn't as good as he is defensively, but I think C's the spot for him, but definitely towards the lower end. He's just average below average. Brian McCann, if you asked me a few years ago, would probably be in the B, A category back when he was in his prime, but Brian McCann's just not the same player he once was. I'm going to have to drop McCann in the C category. While he is hitting better this year, he had a terrible year last year. He is getting up there in age, so you always have to worry about that. He's definitely on the decline in his career. Right now, he's pretty much just an average catcher. I mean, the dude's pretty much splitting time with Tyler Flowers, so you can't really put a guy who splits time above C tier because if he was really that good, he'd be playing a lot more. Wilson Ramos. Wilson Ramos, I'm going to drop in the B tier. While defensively, he is definitely weak. I mean, the guy doesn't catch a great game. He's not great at blocking. So defense is definitely the weak part. He is a pretty good hitter. And while he was off to a slow start this year in 2019, we've seen him in the past. He's a pretty solid hitter. So I'm not going to put him in that A tier because I don't think he is there yet. To be in there, you have to be a good hitter and a good fielder. Wilson Ramos, of course, doesn't field very well, so I think B tier is fair for Wilson. Francisco Cervelli, not off to a great start this year. Again, another player hitting below 200. This is tough because last year he was like a 250 hitter and I thought he was underrated, probably would have been in B, but including this year, he's just been terrible. So I think I'm gonna have to put him in the C category. He's just bang on average right now. Kurt Suzuki, kind of in a similar situation here. He was kind of like split in time again. He had some power last year for Atlanta. He's now the backup, of course, to Jan Gomes in Washington. I'm gonna drop him in the C tier because he's not playing every single day, so I don't even really like that he's on this list necessarily. But when he does play, he does make a decent impact. He can swing the bat a little bit. He's pretty good behind the plate. So again, can't put him in B or A because he's not the main guy, but definitely as a backup, he's one of the better, and I think he's a C average catcher in general. Christian Vasquez for the Boston Red Sox. I'm going to drop him in the B category, and this one actually shocks me. This is a dude who's jumped up my rankings higher and higher as the season's gone on. Before, he was pretty much a defensive catcher for the Red Sox. If you got anything out of him with the bat, you were happy, and he's hitting really well this year. Over 300, seven home runs. He's actually swinging the bat really well for Boston, so I think I got to drop him in the B category because he's a good fielder, and while he is hitting well this year, I'm not going to count that as like his entire career. I still have to even it out a little bit, therefore making him an average hitter, good fielder, B rating. Jan Gomes, another one of these players, not off to a great start this year. I think I'm going to put him in the higher tier of C. Catcher's definitely not a strong suit for the Nationals. Now, he is a great catcher because defensively and what he does calling a game-wise, he has a really good job, but he's kind of offering nothing at the plate, and I still need for a catcher to get above that C rating. I need them to be more of a complete player, and right now, He's just not that kind of guy. So I guess you could argue that you say Wilson Ramos can hit but can't field, but then you say Gomes is good in the field but can't hit. Why is he not in B as well? Pretty much a lot of catchers can field. So I need to see that extra. I need to see a hitting. Hitting is pretty much the most important thing. Gary Sanchez was horrendous defensively last year, and he's still not great defensively this year, but as long as you hit, no one really cares. Pedro Severino, he would have been the D category for me because of previous years, but he is actually hitting better than he has in the past. So I'll drop him in the C. Right on average, again, he's got a great arm behind the plate. Defensively, he's pretty decent. I don't think he's going to hit like this for the entire season because we saw him in Washington and he just wasn't great there. So I think he's probably a C tier, more like a D probably at the end of the year, but right now I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and drop him in C. Josh Fegley. Josh Fegley is definitely playing like a B tier kind of catcher this year, but I have a hard time putting him there because again, he's having a career season. Prior to this, he's like a 200 hitter. So I'm gonna put him towards the top end of C. 
and I think some Ace fans are probably going to be a little bit mad if there are any of them that watch these videos, but you know that Josh Fegley is overperforming. You've seen him in the past. He's not this kind of player. He's playing great this year, but I have to give it just like as a whole. He's not there yet for me. I can't put him there just yet. Wellington Castillo, for me, this is a dude who's had a hard time staying on the field the last couple seasons, and that's really important as a catcher. He's not hitting this year. He hit okay last year, but I don't know. With Wellington Castillo, I had a lot of hopes for him in the past, and he's kind of let me down a little bit. The steroid stuff getting injured a lot. He's just not the same kind of player that I once thought he was. I'm going to drop him in the D category. Definitely a bit of a disappointment for the White Sox. It's not very good this year. JT Ramuto, definitely going to go into the S tier. Best catcher in baseball, in my opinion. I don't think it's necessarily really even close. He's really good defensively. He's throwing out runners pretty well. He can hit, he can run. JT Ramuto is like a five tool catcher. If there was ever a saying for that, he's definitely the best catcher in the league. Clearly S tier. Jonathan Lucroy is so tough because again, another guy having a career year and he's shown us in the past. He can be an all-star when he was with the Brewers. He was great but he's been struggling recently. Oh, uh, Jonathan Lucroy, like I want to put him in B. I'm going to drop him in B right now. He might move to C. He's right on that borderline for me. So he's hitting well. We've seen him hit well in the past. I think he is a good player. It's just ah, the last few years have been weird for him, but it seems like he's back on track. Right now, I'm going to put him in B, but he could change to C by the end of this video. Jorge Alfaro traded, of course, for JT Ramuto to the Marlins from the Phillies. I'm going to drop him in the B category. I thought that the Phillies gave up on him very quickly, but of course, when you have Alfaro and you can get Ramuto, you make that trade because Ramuto is obviously the better catcher, but Alfaro is actually pretty decent. He's probably one of the better catchers in the league, especially in the National League right now. I don't think he's A tier because, again, I still need to see a little bit more out of him, but he has a hose behind the plate. He's pretty good back there. He's swinging the bat well, and he's actually pretty fast. He's up there with JT Ramuto for speed. So while he's on the Marlins and you're kind of forgetting about him because they're terrible, Jorge Alfaro is actually a pretty decent catcher. I'm going to put him in B. Mike Zunino, terrible hitting for average. He definitely has some pop in his bat, and he's very good defensively. I'm going to throw him in C because of that. He definitely has some pop. He's great defensively, but again, just not consistent enough for me. And again, injuries as well are a big problem for him. So C, he's average for me. He's not going to make your team better. He's not going to make your team worse. Mitch Garver. This might surprise people, but I'm going to throw Mitch Garver in the B tier. He's off to an insanely hot start in 2019. He's finally coming back from his injury that he's had. He was actually a pretty decent hitter in 2018 for the short amount of time that he ended up playing. Mitch Garver's actually pretty decent for the Minnesota Twins, so a lot of people probably don't know about him because, again, plays in Minnesota, was a backup catcher, kind of splits time here and there, but Mitch Garver's pretty good. Roberto Perez, this is a guy who's basically been a backup of his entire career. He's finally getting more playing time in Cleveland. He's hitting a little better than he has in the past, but he's a defensive catcher. He was a backup for his entire life. He stayed in the majors because he's a decent guy behind the plate, but I just, I have no interest in that. F, definitely F tier for me. He offers nothing to the lineup. He offers nothing to this team. As a backup, it works. But playing every day just doesn't cut it for me. He's definitely gonna be our first F tier. Tony Walters, another player having a career year at the plate, but I gotta drop him in C. For this year, he's definitely playing at a B type rating. But for his entire career, what I think we can expect by the end of the season, I don't think he's gonna be able to keep it up for a full year. He's a 230 hitter in the past in the majors. While he's having a great start, I just don't see it lasting. So Tony Walters is going to fall on C, but again, he's playing like a B this year, but I just, I have to project. I have to think what's going to happen at the end of the year, and it's just, I don't see him there. Martin Maldonado, he's going to go right in the D category. Good defensively, he's won a gold glove in the past. He's pretty good behind the plate, but he literally offers almost nothing at the plate. He's never had a career OPS plus above 100, which is the league average. He's pretty much in the 70s or 80s every year. He's not very good, and especially on a bad team, it makes it even worse. Danny Jansen, we haven't seen a lot of him. He is young. He was a prospect for the Blue Jays, but from what we have seen, yeah, he's going to have to go in the F tier for me. He has just not looked very good for the Blue Jays. Francisco Mejia too. Ooh, I'm going to have to put him in the F tier, I think, as well, and this one pains me because I really like the guy as a player. I was at Padre Spring Training this year, got to see him work a little bit during the time I was there working on some catching drills. He's just not a catcher. It's simple as that. He lacks the fundamentals that can make you a successful catcher in baseball. Absolute hose behind the plate. Don't get me wrong. Crazy good arm, but he's not hitting right now. And he's pretty bad as a catcher defensively. So I think he's got to go in the F tier, but I don't think he's an F tier caliber player. I just think at catcher, it's not working. Jeff Mathis. Jeff Mathis is going to be F tier. I don't necessarily know why he's on here. And I don't see Kiner Falefa, even though he's their main catcher. So I guess this list is a little bit off. Interesting that they'd include some backups, but not him. But yeah, Jeff Mathis, F tier. Yasmani Grandal. Yasmani Grandal is going to go into the S tier for me. Yasmani Grandal, I think, is one of the elite catchers in the game. Now, of course, what we've seen in the playoffs, he looks terrible every year. I don't know what happens when he gets there. It just something clicks and he sucks. But the dude can definitely swing the bat. One of the better hitting catchers in the league. He's actually pretty good defensively. It's just when he gets put on the national stage, he seems to screw up. There's not a lot of elite in the catching category in Major League Baseball. It's a very tough position, but I think he's one of the two or three guys in there. 
there. Tucker Barnhart. Ooh, this is tough. Is he average or is he D? I'll put him in average because he's, again, really good defensively. He's off to a slow start swinging the bat, but he's been like a 230, 240 hitter, which again, doesn't sound great, but in the grand scheme of catchers, it's actually not that bad. And if he can play good defense, you'll take it. Carson Kelly's tough because we really haven't seen enough out of him. This is really the first year we're getting of action from him. And he's playing pretty well, honestly, for the Dimebacks. Like he's probably playing at B level this year. So I'm gonna drop Carson Kelly in B level. He could very well be C, but from the short amount of time that we've seen of him right now, he's been a pretty decent catcher. So I think B's a good spot. James McCann playing really well for the White Sox this year. Again, I think this is gonna be another player I drop in the B category. He can definitely swing the bat a little bit. It was a nice little pickup they got him from the Tigers. He's like a lifetime 250 hitter. He's playing well this year. I think James McCann's a pretty decent catcher. Lower end of B, higher C, but... I think that's where he belongs. Robinson Chirinos, another player. High OPS, hits a lot of home runs, doesn't necessarily hit for average. Pretty decent behind the plate. Another guy who's gonna fall in the B category. He's just a little bit above average. Like I'd put him probably in that top 10 catchers category, but bottom of B, high end of C. I'm just gonna drop him in B right now because I can't put everybody in C. Jason Castro, I'm gonna drop in the C category. Great year this year. In the past, mediocre at best. So I'm not gonna overrate what he's done this season. So I'm going to put him at C. Omar Nervaez. Omar Nervaez has been swinging the bat the last couple seasons. Again, not enough people talked about him. I said it in my video yesterday. I said it under any of your players video. He's actually very good. So I think he's a B tier catcher as well. Omar Nervaez is definitely, definitely solid behind the plate for the Mariners. A good pickup for them. My guy, Grayson Griner from the University of South Carolina. Cannon behind the plate. Absolute cannon. But yeah, he can't swing the bat at all. The dude's almost an automatic out. I'm going to have to put him in F tier. Pains me because he's a Gamecock just like me, but he's just not good enough defensively to outweigh how bad he is with the bat. Buster Posey is going to be our first catcher in the A tier right now. Now, yes, Buster Posey is definitely not nearly the catcher he once was. He's definitely not nearly the player he once was. And honestly, I would love to put him in B, but I think that if I put Buster Posey in B, there's gonna be an absolute firestorm in the comment section. Even though I feel like I'm right, it's probably more appropriate to put him in A, just because there'd almost be no guys in A then. So yeah, I, I gotta put him in A. Tyler Flowers, this is funny because he's a pretty decent hitter, but ooh, he like can't even throw out runners. He's pretty terrible behind the plate. So I'm gonna drop him in the higher tier of C here for the sheer fact that his hitting is not good enough to outweigh how poor he is defensively. So I think Tyler Flowers gets in C. Gary Sanchez is so tough because he's clearly like the best power hitting catcher in Major League Baseball. But defensively, he's rough. He kind of boxes all the balls, but he's got a cannon. Yeah, you know what? I got to drop Gary Sanchez in S because even though as much as I am a catcher myself and I love to see someone catch a great game, it doesn't matter with this guy. He hits at a level that we haven't seen in a long time at catcher. So I think I'd drop him in S tier because he just gives you so much insane value with his hitting behind the plate that his defense honestly becomes a moot point because his offense is just so much better than everyone else. Yachty, I'm gonna drop an A, the most overrated player in baseball possibly because everyone likes to tell me that he's the best catcher in the game still. I'm gonna put him in A because obviously he's had a great career. His 2019 is not amazing, but it's not bad. He's still good defensively, not as good as everyone thinks he is. But when you look at the B category, he's clearly not worse than Jonathan Lucroy. Like I'm I'm not picking Luke Roy over him. I'm not picking Mitch Garver over him in a season. But when we're talking about numbers for just this year, there are players having better years. So please don't say he's the best catcher this year in baseball. That's absolutely insane. But I'm going to show him respect. He definitely deserves A tier. Wilson Contreras, let me tell you, this man is so incredibly close to S, but I'm going to drop him to A right now. He's hitting like a fiend. He's hitting 300, just absolutely tearing baseballs up for the Chicago Cubs. He's great behind the plate. He's picking off runners. He's throwing runners out. I love watching Wilson Contreras play. He's a very exciting catcher, almost like a young Yadi Molino when he first came up. A better hitter, honestly a better athlete not as good defensively i'll give him that but i think he's really good finally hitting that potential we all thought he would get a tier austin hedges yeah i'm dropping you in f tier austin hedges is a player that i feel like gets overrated like crazy too for some reason this is someone who the mets were considering trading noah Syndergaard for him and manuel margot like you think that Austin Hedges is going to be your everyday catcher? You can't possibly think that. He can't hit a lick. I hear about how he's a decent hitter all the time, and his numbers are always bad. Defensively, cool, he's great, but I just, I don't get it. Maybe he's probably D, but I put him in F because I have a little bit of personal vendetta. I can't stand when people say he's a great catcher. Russell Martin, I'm going to drop in D category. He is a backup or at least splitting time with Austin Barnes in LA. He's obviously towards the back end of his career now. He's becoming the aging veteran. He's not as good defensively as he used to be. He's not as good of a hitter as he used to be. He's on the decline. I'm going to drop him in the D tier because again, it's just not starting catcher caliber. And then Salvador Perez, although he's not playing this year, he's still on this list. So I'm going to drop him to A tier. Salvador Perez is a very good catcher defensively. One of the best in the league. Some metrics will tell you he's not great. But if you watch this guy catch, 
If you know what Kachuk is and you see him play, you go, yeah, he's pretty good. And he can swing the bat. He has some pop in his bat. He'll hit for, you know, 240, 260 in that area, which is great for catcher if you have pop. And he's good defensively, like I said. So I think he's going to be A tier, although he's not playing this year. And that might be one of my more lengthy videos, but as you guys can tell, I do have a passion for catching. That was my position when I was younger. That's the position I love the most. I wish I played more. So this one definitely has a little bit more sentimental value and I, I, I just know it better. I'd love to know what you guys think about my tier list down in the comment section below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? You can give me your thoughts and opinions down there. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and you enjoy the content. If you love baseball, this is the place to be. Click that sub button. Remember to leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it. That's the best way to show your support. And make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at GiraffeNickMark. Links in the description down below to both those. Thank you guys so much for watching. YouTube recommends you watch this video right here as well as this is my most recent upload. So click through those if you have not yet seen them. Tomorrow's another day and I'm sure we might get another tier list here unless we get some big news. So keep an eye out for that and I'll see you all next time. Bye.